Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, me and Ella are going to be teaching you all about bumping up your seedlings or repotting them and exactly why you should do this, whether or not your seedling has outgrown its cell and kind of the science behind why we do this. So some people call it bumping up or potting up, but all it's referring to is taking it from its small jiffy cell or from its small uh, tray cell and putting it into a larger pot. And while the common thought for this is, well, simply my plant needs a larger pot, the science behind it tells us it's something actually quite different. So when we bump up our seedlings, or the reason why we don't start in a large pot to begin with is because anyone who started seeds knows that when you're trying to keep that top layer moist in a container, what tends to happen is the top layer will dry out, which will reduce our germination rates, while the bottom layers will get too saturated with water and turn anaerobic and can kind of sometimes smell neither one of these situations are ideal both will kill off your seedling so that's why we start in the tinier cells if you're having issues germinating seeds you have a lot of dampening off or your seeds simply are just not germinating then you may want to look into starting off with a smaller cell or with those jiffy pods like the little peat pods now when we bump up our seedlings we typically want to do this once we have a few leaves in in place so I'll show you kind of the minimum I have two cotyledons and two true leaves on this I would consider this a little bit too small to bump up however something closer in size to this would be adequate so now I have two fully formed leaves my cotyledons are pretty much non-existent I just have one left and I have a third true leaf on a way this is a good candidate to get bumped up you can do it when they're bigger than this and you can do it when it's smaller it really doesn't matter now there is a way to do this properly to maximize the benefits so the first way to maximize your benefits is to really rough up those roots and i know this is contrary to everything i ever say but when we're potting up in a controlled indoor scenario it is completely safe to do so because we don't have the effects of intense sun and wind and just the outdoor um, transplant stress we're able to stress those roots because we're putting that plant right back into the same scenario that it came from and that scenario is safe we are controlling the water we are controlling the light and we are controlling that air flow so to properly bump up your seeds you actually want to damage your roots a little bit say you planted two seedlings in a container together Say these two, for example, we're in a cell together and the roots are entangled in the soil. Literally, all you're going to do is just rip them apart out of the soil. You're going to hear some cracking. You're going to hear some breaking. That's a good thing. The reason why is we're trying to build up that root biomass. The reason why you see such exponential growth when you bump up or pot up your plants has more to do with the development of a thicker, more fibrous root system, then it has to do with a bigger container and more room to move around. The plant really doesn't care how much room it has to move around, which we talked about in the root bound video, so long as you're providing it the nutrients and the water it needs, which is why when you plant in cells, you'll notice that the roots will fall down into the catching tray and they will just make a whole little infestation in the bottom. It's because the roots really don't care. However, when we rip roots, we have something similar to what we have on the stem, and it's called meristematic stem tissue. And I could do a whole video on this stuff, but essentially what it does is when we rip the nodes or we disrupt the root system, it will cause branching and offshoots. So for every root you rip, you will get two new ones. It's kind of like Medusa, essentially. So that is why we want to ensure we're ripping those roots a little bit. The only time I do not advocate for this is like I said, when you're transplanting outdoors, 
The exception to this would be if you're an absolute master at hardening off and you're really confident in your abilities to harden off, then yes, of course you can do this. There's absolutely no reason why you can't and it will benefit your plants. However, if you're not a master at hardening off or your climate is variable, so one night it could be plus five, the next day it could be plus 20, it's all over the map, then I wouldn't suggest ripping those roots or tussling them whatsoever. So when it comes to transplanting outdoors, I'll do a separate video, but transplanting indoors, we want to rip these roots up. Like I said, it's going to have a Medusa effect on the crop, which is going to cause greater root biomass, which means more root hairs, which means more nutrient capture, more water capture, better ability to release exudates into the soil, and the list just goes on and on. So let me know in the comments down below if you bump or pot up your plants and what method you use, if you've shied away from ripping your roots up or not. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it on Facebook groups, forums, wherever you think it will find someone that it can help. I wanna to try to grow this community a little bit more this summer, this spring. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is really, really wild to me. And yeah, it's going really, really well. And I'm super proud of uh, what we're building here. I feel like everything is really positive in the comment section for the most part. And yeah, so if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up tap that subscribe button, hit that bell so you can see Ella every once in a while, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.